Hello and welcome. Um, my name is Hazel and I'm one of the course advisors here at the University of Manchester and I'm joined today um, by my colleague Daisy. Thanks Hazel. Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, so obviously as Hazel mentioned we are both course advisors here at the University of Manchester and um, we look after several different online and blended part-time um, postgraduate courses and our roles are really to support prospective students like yourselves through their decision making journey and obviously through the application process. So welcome everyone. Yeah, and uh, thanks Daisy for the um, introduction to, um, to our roles. And um, what we're going to do is um, we're gonna show you that screen and we're gonna show you how to submit an application going through each individual step of the process. What we're gonna show you will start from once you've created an account um, for the application portal. Um, but prior to that, you will have to create an individual account and there will be details that you need to fill in about yourself um, during that um, account creation. And those details do pre-populate the application form as well in some places, as you'll see during the demonstration. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna share our screens and we're gonna walk you through the process. So once you've logged into the application portal, you're going to be brought to this screen where you need to select your level of study to um, choose the relevant course to you. So for all of our um, online masters, postgraduate certificates and postgraduate diplomas and continuing professional development, you'll need to select postgraduate taught. And then it will load. You can tell when it's working by the dial in the corner of the screen. And you'll then need to select the relevant academic year. If you're studying a course that starts in February, so for example, say you're applying for February 2022, you'll need to select the 2021 to 2022 academic year. Or if you were applying for September 2022, you'd need to select the 2022 to 2023 academic year. You'll then need to find the relevant course. So in this case, we're going to be looking for international fashion marketing. And you can see that the course has appeared here. We'll then select that. And we'll also need to select the relevant centre and the relevant start date. So in this case, we want to apply for the Masters in International Fashion Marketing Blended Learning February intake for Manchester. You'll then see here that the um, application details and the course details have been pre-populated and we'll need to select continue. So then we're going to move on to start filling in each of the steps of the application form. So we'll start with step one, personal details. In this section, several things will be pre-populated for you already, but you will need to fill out the details as you can see on your screen. So you'll need to fill out your country of birth. Along with your gender. Your ethnic group. And you need to state whether or not you have a disability. You can add additional information here regarding that if you select yes. Now you've completed step one, we can move on to step two, which is your contact and address details. As you can see, some of the things here will be pre-populated already. You'll need to make sure that you copy from the home address to add your second address, and you'll need to start filling in the information as you can see on your screen. So your phone number, and your email address and you need to select what is your preferred choice of how we contact you. Now you've completed step two, we move on to step three. This is all about your nationality. So as you can see, these are mandatory fields. So please go ahead, as you can see on your screen, um, to fill these sections out. Once you've done that, you can check your information and once you've selected country of residence, you will then select the county. And that should be section three or step three completed. 
So we then move on and we need to add in your academic qualifications. So here we're focusing on whether or not you have um, an undergraduate degree or whether you're um, still studying for one at the moment. So for this case, we're going to select yes. We're then prompted with the next steps of the application form. So here we can select the country in which we studied. So for this, we'll say um, the United Kingdom for this example. Um, one thing to bear in mind with this country in which you studied is that sometimes you might be studying at a university that is um, actually based in another country and validates your degree from another country. So for example, say you're studying a course at an American university based in Italy, you would need to select the USA and then your university would appear under the list of institutions from the USA. It wouldn't appear under the list of institutions from Italy. In this case, we're going to be looking for the University of Manchester. And we can also, um, to make sure we're typing in um, slightly less information, we can just choose contains and enter in and enter in the, um, the name that we're looking for. And you can see all of the institutions here with Manchester in their name. So we're going to select the University of Manchester. The type of degree, in this case, we're going to choose a bachelor's degree. You can see that more options now become available. So the qualification here that we're going to choose is fashion technology. We then need to choose the date that we started the course. So for this example, we're going to choose um, 2012 and we're going to choose September. And we're going to say that we were awarded in 2016 as if we were doing a four year undergraduate course. Say that is um, four years in this instance. The mode of study. Here will be full-time, part-time or distance learning. So in this case, we're going to assume that we're a full-time on-campus student. And the degree subject area here, um, we will be selecting arts. The grading system, you would choose UK grade, but if you've studied outside the UK, you may have had a GPA, or you may also use the um, letter system in your de degree classification as well. So here you can choose the degree that you achieved. In this case, we'll say we achieved a second class upper honours. And you can also add in any additional information that you have about um, your study. So for example, you could include something to say that you were a student representative. And you would then click check my information to save that. We then move on to English language. So if you um, don't speak English as a first language, then you will be asked to prove um, your English language ability. So in the English language requirement section, because we've selected that we have a degree from a majority English speaking country, we would select this as our option. But if you've studied something like an IELTS, you perhaps have an English GCSE or another type of English test, you would be able to select um, this option or there might be um, another option that's most relevant to you. So for this case, we're going to choose I have a degree from a majority English speaking country. And here you can see the data is pre-populated from where we entered our academic qualifications. We then click check my information to make sure that that's saved. So in some cases, and particularly with our online and blended learning courses, we do take into consideration work experience. So here we would want to include whether we have any relevant work experience. So we might say, um, for example, here, yes, we do. So here you might have been working perhaps in um, at the University of Manchester, Manchester, and you can see here, that we can pre-populate that, that information. And then we would select the most relevant job function to make sure that we are supporting and helping our admissions team when they are 
reviewing the application. And then you would choose the date that you started the position. So in this instance, we're going to say that we started this job straight after graduating. But if you have more than one relevant, um, relevant piece of employment that you want to um, highlight to us, then you can use the add option to add more um, employment history. We then move on to the professional membership section. So here um, you will need to select if you've got membership to a professional body that you um, may support your application. So for example, we're applying for international fashion marketing. So we are going to say that we are a member of the Textile Institute. And we have completed this qualification. It then asks you when your qualification was awarded. And so let's say, for example, that this qualification that we've got here was awarded in January 2021. Are you a member of the professional body? Yes. Now, in some cases, you may have taken multiple exams to, um, to be a member. The date your qualification is awarded is the date that you will need to um, use as the date of your membership. If you've taken multiple qualifications and therefore been a member of the professional body for longer, you'd have to enter in each of those separately. So say, for example, I wanted to enter that I'd actually been a member of the Textile Institute since July 2020. And I try to save this information that won't work. I would have to select January 2021 in line with the qualification information that I've selected. And then the next step of the application form is starting to look at the different funding sources and how you're going to fund your studies with us. Thank you, Hazel. Um, just before I go into step eight, you can see as we've been working through the various steps um, on the left hand side of the screen, you can see there's a green ticks throughout the different steps, which means each of those is complete. So do be aware that you need to complete all of the steps in order to, to successfully upload and, and um, complete your application. So as you can see, step eight is all about funding sources. So this is really important for our admissions team to understand how you will be funding uh, your particular degree of choice. Um, so you can see here, have you secured or do you intend to apply for funding to cover the cost of your studies? If you intend to fund your studies yourself, please select no. In this case, we're going to select yes. And you can select from the various types of funding sources, um, as you can see on your screen. Um, in this case, we're going to select um, that you'll be funding through the student loan company and you will then just populate the, the different um, questions that you can see on your screen in front of you. This will obviously be different for each um, of you applying to your master's. Um, but there's various different ways of, of obviously funding for your degree. So you select the one that is most relevant and applicable to, to yourself. You can obviously add any comments regarding the type of funding that, you, that you've chosen to go with. So you can you can add this here, as you can see on your screen. Then we click add. And you can add another way of funding your degree of choice. And as I said, this is a really insightful way for our admissions team to understand how you will be funding um, your chosen masters. Then you click check my information and that is now saved and completed. Now we move on to step nine, which is where we can um, go into the references and referee details. So the majority of our online and blended learning courses require a minimum of two references. So you need to populate both of these, um, or both of these sections. All you need to do here is provide us with the contact details and name of your, or your referee of choice. Um, we require professional or academic um, 
So please kind of un understand and, and know who those referees are going to be before you get to this point. Um, and then we'll do the hard work and, and reach out to, to your referees and gain that reference for you. If you are currently working and are employed, um, I would strongly encourage you to, to make at least one of those references professional. Um, if you have, have only recently graduated, then obviously um, the best choice would be academic. Um, but obviously, if you are working, a professional reference is, is always um, desirable. And then once this is completed, we can check the information and then it should be saved and a completed step. Now we move on to step 10, which is your personal statement. Now, for the majority of our online and blended learning degrees, we require a supporting statement. So this is um, a 500 word maximum piece of writing where you need to write about your motivations for wanting to, to study your degree of choice. This needs to be concise and is something that um, your dedicated course advisor will look over and, and help you with at the early stages of, of kind of getting your application ready and prepared but it does need to be 500 words maximum and it needs to clearly outline your motivations and um, why you've chosen to study or apply to the, the degree of choice why the University of Manchester and, and how you hope this degree program will help you um, in terms of your career and um, obviously professional and personal development. So once you've uploaded that um, personal statement into the box in front of you, you can check your information and that should be saved and complete. So we are now just moving on to the um, additional information. This isn't a particularly large section that you fill in, um, but you just need to um, make this very clear to us so we understand how to treat your application. So the first thing is um, we ask that you um, let us know how you found out about us. So for a lot of people, that's an internet search. So we're going to select that in this instance. And in this case, please indicate if you're applying using an educational agent. That's sometimes for overseas students who have um, an agency who um, help them to submit their application. However, in a lot of cases, that won't be applicable. So in this instance, we're going to be selecting that. And then we check our information and that will save. And you can see the tick has appeared here. And then the final step of the application form is adding in our supporting documents. So we are going to upload these um, attachments. So we're choosing these from our files. And in this case, we are providing our um, degree certificate. So we select that here. And we upload. And you can see that that's been uploaded here. And then we just go through and we upload all of our documents. And then for these last two here, we um, these ones aren't mandatory to upload, but it can help and support your application if you do have the document. So we would encourage you to upload any additional supporting documentation that you can upload. We then select check my information and that will all save. So now that we have um, completed all 12 sections of the application form, you can see here that the submit application button is um, available to us and you will just select that and be prompted on screen to submit your application. If you do have any problems at any point, then you can also contact us through study online at manchester.ac.uk where your dedicated course advisor will be happy to help. So that is um, basically our, our application portal. Um, we've walked you through the steps um, that you would take um, to submit an application as part of that. Um, but what we can now do is we can open up to any questions um, that you might have about um, submitting applications, um, any questions that weren't covered or weren't answered by what we've um, just shown um, through our application portal. Great, thank you, Hazel. So I've had a question come through um, live today. Um, they're asking or, or letting us know that their course starts in May 2022, so May this year. What academic year should they select? Yeah, so um, as you will have seen um, on the application portal, we used um, a course starting February 2022. So um, we selected the 2021 to 2022 academic year for that. That's the same um, for May. 
that will fall into the 2021 to 2022 academic year for courses starting in May um, 2022. Um, it's probably worth highlighting as well, we do have courses that start in November, particularly for those people taking CPD or continuing professional development. Um, and in those instances, um, they need to select the 2022 to 2023 academic year. Um, the best way to, to explain it um, is that in the UK, our academic years, they um, tend to run September to August um, in terms of teaching. So that's the way that our application portal and our IT systems um, show the academic years. And they switch over during the summer um, to change between those two years. Thank you, Hazel. And one thing to obviously mention, if you are listening and kind of worried that you're you're not really understanding that kind of process um it is hard when you don't work in academia um to understand the different years it is quite confusing so if you are unsure we are here to support you myself hazel and um other colleagues that's our role so give us a shout if you are kind of confused um and we can obviously offer clarity around that Hazel, I have another question for you, if that's OK. Um, yeah, that's fine. The students studied outside of the UK and they do have an IELTS examination booked, but they're wondering what do they enter or how would they enter that on the application form? So when we were walking through the application form, they will have seen um, on the English language section, there was a number of other options. Um, so if they had an IELTS exam booked, but they'd not yet taken it, there was an option for that. And if you selected the um, if you selected that, it would then prompt you to enter in the details of when you're expected to take the exam, um, what type of exam that is. And if you've already got the results as well, there's an option for that, too. And you'd be able to enter in um, your um, relevant details, things like your test report form number and the overall score and component grades as well. And that will enable our admissions teams to verify those grades um, alongside your application. Thanks, Hazel. So that's it on the question front. I did just before we wrapped up want to kind of reiterate the importance of the documentation towards the end of the, the application portal. So it's so important to upload all of the documents at the very end. And um, that really just helps our admission team get a full picture of you as an individual and, and your specific skills. Um, and attributes. So obviously, just to remind you, um, it is a detailed CV. Um, it's that supporting statement, which um, we ran through earlier on today. Um, it's your degree certificates and transcripts, and they must be original copies and translated if necessary. And if applicable, we will need an English language certificate from you that can be uploaded. But obviously, if you've got questions around any of that, in particular, if you would like uh, myself and, and the rest of the team to review or look over your CV or supporting statement, then by all means share that with us. Um, it allows us to help you and offer guidance, but it also allows us to really get to know you as individuals and, and kind of support you in the best way possible. So just wanted to reiterate the importance of the supporting documents. Um, they really kind of hold together the, the entire application um, or your application. So do kind of remember to upload those at the end. Um, I guess, Hazel, um, it's been great to, to be on today's event with you. And I hope everyone listening um, live and watching us back has found it useful. Um, and we will circulate this recording at a later date as well to, to everyone interested. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. And um, yeah, thanks, Daisy. And thank you to everyone watching really and um, that sums up today's webinar if you do have any more questions um, that you think about after you've watched this you can get in touch with, with us through study online at manchester.ac.uk and um, either myself or daisy or um, the rest of our, our team as well will be more than happy to help and um, come back to you answering any questions or queries that you have um, so um, thank you everyone and we hope to hear from you soon <laughs>